to Licensing Support Scotland, Staff Server Training DVD. The law has changed. Working in a licensed premises now means that you must complete at least two hours of training on a schedule stipulated by the Scottish Government. You may have been working for years in a licensed premises, but the law will not accept that as adequate and you must be retrained on the correct topics. A training record of your staff training must be kept on the premises where you work and must be signed by a personal licence holder or a qualified trainer. This affects all staff that sell or serve alcohol, paid or unpaid, full-time, part-time, casual or just helping out. Whether you're a waitress, bar staff, shop assistant, anyone that serves or sells alcohol must be properly trained. You may work in an off-licence shop, public bar, restaurant, nightclub, casino, supermarket. The law is not specific to certain venues or establishments and the mandatory minimum two hours training must be completed by all staff and servers. Depending on your establishment where you work, many of the points contained within the training may seem irrelevant to you. But as the law does not specify different training for different establishments, everyone must complete the stipulated training schedule. Hi, so you want to work in a bar, a restaurant, nightclub, off sales or in fact anywhere that sells alcohol? Under new licensing laws, every person paid or unpaid that makes a sale or serves alcohol must complete two hours of training prior to selling alcohol. In this DVD we will cover the mandatory 16 points of training, which will be issued to you by a personal licence holder. The mandatory 16 training points are the legal basis of the requirement for the training of staff under paragraph 6 of Schedule 3 to the Act, the licensing objectives, the definition of alcohol in the Act, what constitutes an unlicensed sale, the functions of licensing standards officers, including their powers of entry. The nature of an operating plan and its place in a licensing system. The different types of premises license conditions under Section 27 of the Act. Special provision for clubs under Section 125 of the Act. Licence hours under Part 5 of the Act. Offences under the Act, particularly those involving people under the age of 18. Proof of age under sections 102 and 108 of the Act and the Sale of Alcohol to Children and Young Persons Scotland, Regulation 2007A. Test purchasing of alcohol under section 1052 of the Act. Best practice as regards standard of service and refusing service. Units of alcohol and the relationship between units and the strength of different alcoholic drinks. The sensible drinking limits for males and females recommended by the British Medical Association. Good practice in managing conflict situations. Those are the 16 points you must learn prior to selling alcohol. This training film covers all aspects of the required schedule of training as set out by the Scottish Government and within the time allocation as depicted by law, a minimum of two hours. To comply with the law, the DVD training must be issued to you by a personal licence holder and any queries or questions should be referred to them as part of your training. Some of the training will be highlighted as for specific licensed premises and may not be relevant to your premises. However, you must learn all of the points, relevant or not. There are several progress tests contained within the film for you to complete. Should you not understand something, view the training film again or ask your trainer. After training with your personal license holder and viewing this training film, you will complete a 32 question test to show your understanding of the training. It is very important that you understand the training and know your rights and responsibilities. A lack of understanding or failure to comply with the law 
could result in yourself and your personal licence holder being charged with an offence, resulting in a fine, imprisonment or both. The premises may also lose its licence. The legal basis of the requirements for the training of staff under paragraph 6 of Schedule 3 to the Act. Server Training 1 of 16. Requirements of training. It is compulsory requirement under the Licensing Scotland Act 2005 that all staff involved in the sale of alcohol must be trained. Employees must receive a minimum of two hours training from a personal licence holder or trainer covering the schedule specified by the Scottish Government. This training DVD meets the legal requirements for training under the Act when supplied by and supervised by a personal licence holder or a trainer with a valid qualification. A 32 question test which is supplied with this training pack should be completed by the trainee to show an understanding of the training received. Any incorrect answers should be explained by the personal licence holder in order to complete the training. As a requirement of the Act, a training record must be completed and kept on the premises available for inspection. The training record should be signed by both the trainee and personal licence holder who supervises the training schedule contained within this DVD. Where practical, we should recommend a passport style photograph is attached to the training record for identification by council officials and LSOs. The legal basis of the requirements for the training of staff under paragraph 6 of Schedule 3 to the Act. Key points. It is compulsory requirement under the Licensing Scotland Act 2005 that all staff involved in the sale of alcohol must be trained. Employees must receive a minimum of two hours training from a personal licence holder or trainer covering the schedule specified by the Scottish Government. This training DVD meets the legal requirements for training under the Act when supplied by and supervised by a personal licence holder or a trainer with a valid qualification. A 32 question test which is supplied with this training pack should be completed by the trainee to show an understanding of the training received. Any incorrect answers should be explained by the personal licence holder in order to complete the training. As a requirement of the Act, a training record must be completed and kept on the premises available for inspection. The training record should be signed by both the trainee and personal licence holder who supervises the training schedule contained within this DVD. Where practical, we should recommend a passport style photograph is attached to the training record for identification by council officials and LSOs. The licensing objectives. Serve for training 2 of 16. Okay, the first thing you need to know is the Licence in Scotland Act 2005. This sets out five licensing objectives. All are equally important and every decision regarding licensing must be made with reference to the five objectives. Objective 1. Preventing crime and disorder. Objective 2. Securing public safety. Objective 3. Preventing public nuisance. Objective 4. Protecting and improving public health. Objective 5. Protecting children from harm. The Licensing Scotland Act 2005 legally came into effect in September 2009. The Act has five main objectives. 1. Preventing crime and disorder. 2. Securing public safety. 3. Preventing public nuisance. 4. Protecting and improving public health. 5. Protecting children from harm. Each of the five licensing objectives are equally important and should be adhered to and considered in any decision regarding licensing. The licensing objectives, key points. The Licensing Scotland Act 2005 legally came into effect in September 2009. The Licensing Scotland Act 2005 is based on five main objectives. These are called the licensing objectives. Preventing crime and disorder. Securing public safety. Preventing public nuisance. Protecting and improving public health. Protecting children from harm. Each of the licence objectives are considered equally important. 
and should be referred to in every decision that is made in regards to licensing. So, things like serving someone who has drunk even more alcohol could lead to crime and disorder, public safety issues and public nuisance, and it certainly wouldn't lead to improving someone's health. Everything you do must reflect the five licensing objectives and nothing to conflict with them. History of the licensing objectives. The main reason for changing the law and bringing in the new licensing laws were to make things better. The Scottish Government's Plan for Action on Alcohol Problems 2002, updated in 2007, aimed to reduce problems with alcohol such as alcohol use and misuse, underage drinking, binge drinking, drink-related health issues, accidents and crime. One of the decisions was to review and update the Liquor Licensing Legislation's licensing laws. A committee was formed and chaired by Sheriff Principal Nicholson to review all aspects of the liquor licensing law and practice in Scotland. The committee was given instructions to recommend changes with particular reference to the implications for health and public order. The Licensing Scotland Act 2005 came from the recommendations of the Nicholson Committee. The Act came into effect in September 2009 and set out five main objectives which became the licensing objectives. It is important to remember the five licensing objectives. 1. Preventing crime and disorder 2. Securing public safety 3. Preventing public nuisance 4. Protecting and improving public health 5. Protecting children from harm The definition of alcohol in the Act Server Training 3 of 16 The definition of alcohol in the Act OK, so what is alcohol exactly? In the Act, alcohol means spirits, wines, beer, cider, or any other fermented, distilled or spirituous liquor. It doesn't cover alcohol less than 0.5%, Angostura bitters, or alcohol contained in liqueur confectionery. Understanding alcohol. What is alcohol? Alcohol is a depressant drug. This means it depresses areas of the brain and this in turn causes changes in people's behaviour. The Licensing Scotland Act 2005 defines alcohol as spirits, wine, beer, cider or any other fermented, distilled or spirituous liqueur. The Act does not include alcohol 0.5% or below, perfume, any flavouring essence recognised by Customs and Excise as not being intended for consumption or dutiful alcoholic liqueur. The aromatic flavouring essence, known as Angostura bitters, denatured alcohol, methyl alcohol, naphtha or alcohol contained in liqueur confectionery. The definition of alcohol in the Act. Key points. So we have learned that alcohol is a depressant drug. This means that it depresses areas of the brain which alters people's character and behaviour. Although alcohol is classed as a drug, it is a legal drug regulated by the Licensing Scotland Act 2005. Alcohol is spirits, wine, beer, cider, alcopops or any other fermented, distilled or spirituous liquor that is over 0.5% ABV, alcohol by volume. In the UK and Scotland, we have a culture of heavy drinking, drinking in excess almost daily, binge drinking, drinking in excess in short periods, and underage drinking. Because alcohol is legal, people view it as safe and often underestimate its effects. But alcohol in excess can be harmful and often leads to health problems or even death. As a server of alcohol, 
you have a legal responsibility and should be aware of the effects of alcohol. Alcohol affects the brain, which controls emotions, speech, movement and coordination, vision and lastly, the primitive functions. Emotion centre, resulting in lack of inhibitions, more relaxed and outgoing and more flirtatious. Speech centre, slurred speech. Movement centre, unsteady movement, lack of balance. Vision centre, unable to focus, blurred or double vision. Primitive brain functions. This part of the brain keeps all our organs functioning, lungs, kidneys, heart. If the primitive brain is allowed to be affected by excessive alcohol, the person is likely to become unconscious and this can have a fatal outcome. When the primitive brain is affected, this is known as alcohol poisoning. You must never sell anyone this much alcohol. Alcohol and the body. If you watch people drinking alcohol, you can see how their behaviour progressively changes. This includes their ability to make decisions or be reasonable. The more they drink, the more affected they will become. Signs of drunkness. These are some of the progressive changes caused by alcohol. People speak louder and appear more confident as they lose their inhibitions. They slur their words or repeat what they have already said. They become unsteady on their feet and start staggering. Their other senses are affected, including their vision and coordination. Their body's automatic functions start to be affected. This could result in vomiting, unconsciousness or even death. It is important that you recognise the symptoms of drunkenness well before anyone reaches the later stages and refuse service. Alcohol's journey. When people drink alcohol, it is consumed by mouth, it travels to the stomach, from the stomach it goes to the intestines, it's then absorbed through the small intestine into the blood and travels around the body, reaching the brain in just five minutes. It travels around the circulatory system until it reaches the liver, where it is broken down into water waste. The water waste goes to the kidneys and becomes urine and then passes out of the body. Important facts. A person's size can have an effect on how alcohol affects you. A smaller person has less blood flowing through their body for the alcohol to be absorbed into, so will normally feel the effects quicker. Women are generally more likely to feel the effects of alcohol before men. This is mainly because women are normally smaller with more fat but less water to dilute the alcohol. Having something to eat can help slow down the process because the food mixes with the alcohol so the alcohol takes longer to reach the bloodstream. Some myths surrounding alcohol. Being sick will sober you up. False. Being sick will not get rid of the alcohol already in the bloodstream, but may help to get rid of any alcohol still unprocessed in the stomach. Having food will sober you up. False. As we mentioned before, having food before drinking will help to slow down the process of alcohol reaching the bloodstream and brain, but eating after drinking will not sober you up. It will slow down the process, not prevent it. Strong black coffee will sober you up. False. Having a cup of coffee, black or white, can actually worsen the effects of alcohol. Caffeine is a stimulant and can help the alcohol effects to be processed by the brain quicker. Although as a stimulant, caffeine will possibly make you feel less sleepy, but definitely won't sober you up. Drinking water will sober you up. False. Drinking plenty of water will help you with a hangover as alcohol dehydrates the body and is one of the causes of a hangover but drinking water will not affect the amount of alcohol that has been drunk. It is recommended you drink plenty of water when consuming alcohol. A quick nap will sober you up. False. Sleep does not help sober you up. In fact, you may not sleep as well as normal. The only thing that will sober you up is time. The liver processes alcohol at a rate of one unit every hour. And unfortunately, there is nothing you can do to change that. Drinking fizzy booze hits you faster. True. 
Drinking champagne or other fizzy alcoholic drinks does affect you sooner as the bubbles or fizziness cause it to be absorbed quicker into your system. Alcohol heats you up. False. Many people think that alcohol will heat you up, but this is far from the truth. Alcohol actually increases heat loss in the body. The warm feeling you get from drinking alcohol is actually the feeling of heat leaving your body. If you drink often, your body develops a tolerance to alcohol and you can safely drink more. False. Yes, if you drink often, your body may develop a tolerance to alcohol. But the more you drink, the more damage your body will sustain and the greater long-term health damage. Tolerance should be seen as a warning sign as to the damage on your body. Restaurants must provide free drinking water. True. All unlicensed premises, restaurants, bars, nightclubs must provide free tap water fit for consumption. It's a law. This is one of the national mandatory conditions attached to the premises licence. You have now completed the first three topics of training. The legal basis of the requirement for the training of staff. The licensing objectives. The definition of alcohol in the Act. You will now complete a short progress test. Please pause the film on answer if you need more time. The answer will reveal three seconds later. This is not a written progress test. The answers are to inform you if you have understood the information. Should you answer any of the questions incorrectly or are unsure of the answer, please review the relevant section of the training film or discuss the question with your personal licence holder or trainer. Good luck. Progress test 1. Before you sell or serve alcohol, it is compulsory that you train on the 16 topics scheduled by the Scottish Government. How long must the training be? Training must be for a minimum of two hours. Training must be for a minimum of two hours on the schedule set by the Scottish Government. This training film is acceptable when used under the guidance of a personal licence holder or qualified trainer. The Licensing Scotland Act is based on licensing objectives. How many licensing objectives are there? There are five licensing objectives, all equally important. Preventing crime and disorder, securing public safety, Preventing public nuisance, protecting and improving public health, protecting children from harm. The server training is part of the Licence in Scotland Act 2005. When did the Act come into effect? September 2009. The Licence in Scotland Act 2005 developed from recommendations made by the Nicholson Committee. The Act came into effect in September 2009. Definition of alcohol. Which of these are classed as alcohol? Lager shandy, perfume, wine and soda, coke, vodka, low alcohol beer, non-alcoholic beer. Correct answers. Lager shandy, wine and soda, vodka, low alcohol beer. The Act defines alcohol as spirits, wine, beer, cider or any distilled fermented or spirituous liquor. The Act does not include perfume, alcohol below 0.5% ABV, Angostura bitters, denatured alcohol, menthol, naphtha or alcohol contained in liqueur confectionery. When you are selling or serving alcohol, paid or unpaid, which document must be available on the premises? A record of your training must be kept on the premises.
the functions of licensing standards officers, including their powers of entry. Server training 4 of 16. To make sure everything is done correctly, the local council will appoint one or more licensing standards officers, known as LSOs. The LSO will report to the licensing board, liaise with other council departments, and will be a member of the local licensing forum. The LSO's main functions are guidance, compliance, mediation. The licensing standards officer, LSO, is employed by the local council. Depending on the council, there may be one or more LSOs in your area. The licensing standards officer will report to the licensing board, liaise with other council departments, and they will be a member of the local licensing forum. The Licensing Scotland Act 2005 requires each council to establish a local licensing forum for their area. The role of the forums is to keep under review the operation of the licensing system in their area and give recommendations to the licensing board. The forum includes people who represent license holders, the chief constable, police, local residents, young people, health, education and social work functions and at least one LSO. The licensing standard officer has three main functions. Guidance, providing information and guidance to license holders and to any other interested persons concerning the operation of the licensing act in their area, although they cannot give legal advice. Compliance, monitoring compliance by license holders. Mediation, providing mediation services to avoid or resolve disputes or disagreements between license holders and any other persons, for example, a neighbour of a local nightclub complaining about noise. OK, let's look at the guidance. The LSO can provide information and guidance to any interested person concerning the operation of the Licensing Act in their area, although they cannot give legal advice. Compliance. Monitoring compliance by the license holder. So the LSO will check the proper signs are up on display, staff training records comply with the law and so on. Mediation. Providing mediation services to avoid or resolve disputes or disagreements between license holders or any other persons. So under guidance, the LSO could provide information regarding the Licensing Act to an angry neighbour who's upset about drunken behaviour outside the premises. And under the mediation, the LSO could try and resolve the situation between the neighbour and the licence holder. The function of licensing standard officers, including their powers of entry. Key points. The licensing standards officer, LSO, is employed by the local council and have three main functions. Guidance, compliance, mediation. The licensing standards officer has the power to enter and inspect any licensed premises at any time, although they are likely to keep visits to normal opening hours. Anyone who obstructs an LSO from his duties in a licensed premises commits an offence. The LSO may inspect or seize any substance, article or document found on the licensed premises. The LSO may copy documents rather than removing them at their discretion. Anyone working on the premises must give the LSO any assistance or provide any information that is requested by the LSO. Failing to do so, without a reasonable excuse, is an offence. The police and your premises. The police have the right to enter and inspect any licensed premises at any time. Obstructing the police would be an arrestable offence. The police can request the licensing board to issue a closure order if they feel that it is necessary in the interest of public safety. A police officer of the rank of inspector or above can also issue an emergency closure order forcing the immediate closure of a licensed premises where there is a risk to public safety. An emergency closure notice can last up to 24 hours. The nature of an operating plan and its place in the licensing system. Server training 5 of 16. 
Operating Plan A detailed plan of how the licensed premises will trade and operate. It will include a detailed drawing made to scale called the Layout Plan. The Layout Plan will show the areas where alcohol will be sold and displayed. The Layout Plan will also show where all the activities in the premises will take place. Also, if allowed in your premises, what areas children will have access to. Other documents submitted as part of the operating plan are Certificates such as Food Hygiene, Building and Planning A Disabled Access and Facilities Statement The information contained within the actual operating plan is The name and address of the premises manager The capacity of the premises the time and days that the premises will be open and selling alcohol. Times when all other activities will be carried out. Whether alcohol will be sold on licence or off licence or both. A description of all activities that are carried out on the premises. On licence only, if children are allowed and from what ages are allowed. On licence only, the times that children are allowed in, and what areas in the premises children are allowed. The operating plan. An operating plan is a complete description of how the premises will trade, what activities will be carried out both during licensed hours and out with licensed hours. The operating plan for a non-sales premises will have details of whether children are allowed on the premises, what ages of children are allowed and into what specific areas they are allowed to go. An operating plan will include a layout plan. A layout plan is a detailed scale drawing of the premises, showing specific areas where alcohol will be displayed for sale and sold from, where activities will be performed in, what areas children are allowed in and so on. The operating plan will also include whether alcohol will be for on sales, off sales or both. The capacity of the premises. New applications for a premises licence will also include the premises disabled access and facilities statement. Relevant certificates such as building control, planning and food hygiene. All premises applications must meet all criteria set by building control and planning and must include disabled facilities. If it's not in the premises operating plan, then you can't do it. For example, you want to have a karaoke for a charity night, but you didn't state in the operating plan about regular or occasional entertainment. You can't do it. An application for a variation to the premises licence would be required and to be granted prior to the activity taking place. Grandfather rights. Premises that were trading prior to the introduction of the new Act coming into effect in September 2009 were able to apply for grandfather rights. Amongst other benefits, the premises with grandfather rights were not subject to having to meet new building regulations and planning certificates. All new premises licence applications must fully satisfy all building and planning regulations. All new premises licence applications must also meet all new regulations in respect of disabled access and facilities. Premises trading prior to the commencement of the Licensing Scotland Act 2005 were able to apply for grandfather rights. Premises trading with grandfather rights were able to continue trading on a similar basis as before without satisfying new planning and building regulations. Remember, if it's not in the operating plan, then you can't do it. The nature of an operating plan and its place in the licensing system. Key points. The nature of an operating plan and its place in the licensing system. As you have heard, the operating plan is everything about how the business runs, what's sold and where. In this bad, the spirits are here, so they cannot get moved to here. Food cannot be displayed on the bar. In fact, nothing can be altered from the original operating plan unless you apply for a variation of the licence. 
operating plan. A detailed plan of how the licensed premises will trade and operate. It will include a detailed drawing made to scale called the layout plan. Other documents submitted as part of the operating plan are certificates such as food hygiene, building and planning, a disabled access and facilities statement, the operating plan, the name and address of the premises manager, the capacity of the premises, description of all activities carried out on the premises, whether alcohol is sold on sales, off sales or both. The times and days the premises will open and sell alcohol. On sales, if children are allowed, times, ages and what areas. The times when all other activities will be carried out. On licensed premises only. All on licensed premises must have a display notice at all entrance points stating if children are allowed, what ages and into which areas those children are allowed. On licensed premises allowing children access under the age of five must have baby changing facilities available to both males and females. Children are only allowed in the premises if stated in the operating plan and layout plan. Licensed hours under part five of the Act. Server training 6 of 16. On licensed premises. Where alcohol is consumed in the premises, the actual hours that the alcohol can be sold will be stated in the operating plan. Each local licensing board will have a policy on what hours are acceptable and for which type of premises. Although the Licensing Scotland Act 2005 does not prohibit 24 hour licenses, it is unlikely that it would be granted. Off licensed premises. The Licensing Scotland Act 2005 limits the sale of alcohol for consumption off the premises between 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday to Sunday. Local licensing boards may limit this further. The actual off licensed hours will be stipulated in the operating plan. It is your responsibility to check the actual hours as stated in the operating plan for both on license and off license sales. Licensed hours. On licensed premises. Where alcohol is sold for consumption on the premises such as pubs and restaurants. The actual hours that alcohol can be sold will be stated in the operating plan. These hours are individual and specific to each premises. A local licensing board that grants premises licenses will have a local policy on what hours are acceptable in their area. It is unlikely that an application for a 24 hour licence would be granted by a local licensing board, although it may be possible in exceptional circumstances. Off licence premises. Alcohol can only be sold for consumption off the premises between the hours of 10am to 10pm Monday to Sunday. These hours may be limited to less if the local licensing board decides to limit the hours due to local problems or issues. The actual off licensed hours will be stated in the premises operating plan, but will not exceed the maximum hours of 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday to Sunday. Off licensed premises include supermarkets, off sales, shops, and similar. The maximum off licensed hours of 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday to Sunday include pubs, restaurants, and hotels that sell alcohol to take away. So, for example, a pub may continue to sell alcohol for consumption on premises up to their actual licensed hours but cannot make a sale of alcohol for off-premises consumption out with the 10pm deadline or before if limited by the local licensing board. You must check with your premises manager or personal license holder as to the stipulated hours that are stated in the operating plan for on-licensed sales and off-licensed sales. Licensed hours under Part 5 of the Act. Key points. Licensed hours off licensed premises. Licensing hours under Part 5 of the Act. Okay, so let's start with off licensed premises and off licensed sales. Alcohol can be sold on an off licensed premises from 10am to 10pm, Monday to Sunday, 
Although it is possible that a licensing board may restrict off-licence hours for some premises if there are problems or local circumstances. Licence hours on licence premises. On licence will have licence hours determined by the hours stated in their operating plan and this will be specific to each premises so the hour you can sell alcohol will be stated in your operating plan. Licensed hours, extended hours. A premises licence holder can apply to the licensing board for an extension to their licensing hours for a special event or occasion. So if someone wants to hold a birthday party until 2am but the bar only has a licence until midnight, it is possible to apply for an extension. Exceptions to licensing hours. Drinking up time. A period of 15 minutes is allowed at the end of hours for consuming any remaining alcohol that has been bought during licence hours. So if you're licensed until midnight, you can allow someone who's purchased a drink at 11.45pm until 12.15am to finish. Meals. If alcohol is supplied with a meal, the drinking time is increased to 30 minutes. Residents. It is permissible to allow residents and their guests to buy alcohol to consume on premises or takeaway at any time. British summertime. Premises that are open at the time the clocks go back or forward, normally 2am, should ignore the clock change and trade for normal hours, so basically don't change your clocks until after work. Drinking up time. A period of 15 minutes after the normal permitted hours for customers to drink alcohol purchased in the normal hours, extended to 30 minutes where the alcohol was purchased with a meal. Hotel residents and their guests can consume alcohol at any time. However, the alcohol must be purchased by the hotel resident. Off sales may also be purchased at any time by a hotel resident. Premises open at the moment that the clocks go forward or back one hour, British summer time, should ignore the change in time until after normal trading, trading for the normal amount of hours. Extended hours on licence only. An application can be made to the licensing board for a special event or occasion. If granted, the licensing board may attach special conditions. Licensing boards may also grant general extensions for all or some licensed premises in their area where there is a local, national or seasonal event of significance. Remember, it is an offence to sell alcohol out with the permitted hours and to allow the consumption of alcohol out with the permitted hours and drinking up time. You have now completed the next three topics of training. The functions of a licensing standard officer, including their power of entry. The nature of an operating plan and its place in the licensing system. Licence hours under Part 5 of the Act. You will now complete another short progress test. Please pause the film on answer if you need more time. The answer will reveal three seconds later. This is not a written progress test. The answers are to inform you if you have understood the information. Should you answer any of the questions incorrectly or are unsure of the answers, Please review the relevant section of the training film or discuss the question with your personal licence holder or trainer. Good luck! Progress Test 2 A licensing standard officer is employed by the local council and has three main functions. What are the three main functions? Guidance, Compliance, Mediation Guidance and information to license holders and interested persons Compliance, ensuring license holders comply with the legislations Mediation, the LSO can offer mediation to resolve disputes When serving alcohol off license, excluding hotel residents What are the maximum hours that off sales can be sold? Monday to Sunday, 10am 
till 10 p.m. These are the maximum permitted hours. Local licensing board may limit these hours further. Hotel residents may purchase on sales or off sales at any time, but alcohol for guests must be purchased by the hotel resident. At the end of normal licensing hours, there is a period set for drinking up, known as drinking up time. How long is drinking up time? Fifteen minutes for alcohol or thirty minutes for alcohol purchased with a meal. These are the times when people can drink up after normal hours. No more alcohol can be sold during this period. Any remaining alcohol must be taken off the customer after this period. An operating plan is a detailed plan of how the premises will operate, forming the foundations of the premises license. Name three things that must be included in the operating plan. The capacity of the premises, the name and address of the premises manager, whether alcohol will be sold on licence, off licence or both, the times the premises will be open and selling alcohol, times when other activities will be carried out, a description of all activities that are carried out on the premises, on licence only, if children are allowed on the premises, if so, what ages, times and areas. The operating plan is a detailed plan of how the premises operate, forming the basis of the premises licence. New applications should include the layout plan, certificates, together with the disabled access and facilities statement. Who can issue an emergency closure order? A police officer of the rank of inspector or above. The police can make a request to the licensing board to issue a closure order if it is, in their opinion, in the interest of public safety. For example, if close to a football ground and police have intelligence that trouble or rioting may break out in that area. However, an inspector or above can issue an emergency closure order lasting up to 24 hours, where, in their opinion, there is a risk to public safety. For example, police are called to a fight on the premises, but after dealing with the incident, they believe there may be significant further trouble. The different types of premises licence conditions under Section 27 of the Act, 7 of 16. With the exception of members' clubs, the Licensing Scotland Act 2005 states that all premises must have two types of licence to operate, premises licence and personal licence. Premises licence. The premises licence authorises the general sale of alcohol to take place from a particular premises. Personal licence. The personal licence authorises the individual to make the actual sale of alcohol or for the personal licence holder to authorise a trained server to make an actual sale of alcohol on the premises. Under the Licensing Scotland Act 2005, all licensed premises must have two types of licenses to operate and trade. Premises license. A premises license allows and authorises the sale of alcohol on the premises. Personal license authorises and allows a personal license holder to sell alcohol to customers or to supervise and authorise the sale of alcohol by trained staff to customers. Every single sale of alcohol must be authorised by a personal licence holder. The personal licence holder can give authorisation in general to all trained staff over the age of 18 working on the premises to serve or sell alcohol, rather than authorising each and every individual sale. However, the responsibility for each sale is with the server and personal licence holder. If the server fails to serve alcohol properly and within the law, then they can face prosecution in the form of a fine or imprisonment or both. The personal licence holder could be fined, imprisoned or both, as well as having the licence revoked or suspended. Later in this DVD we will look at possible fines and consequences in relation to failing to comply with the law. Types of licence Premises licence The premises licence stipulates what activities are allowed to take place in the premises and during which hours the activities and sale of alcohol can take place. Every premises must have a named premises manager who must be a personal license holder. 
The premises manager will be named on the premises license and is responsible for the day-to-day -day running and management of the premises. A person named as a premises manager can only be named as one premises manager at a time. The premises license lasts indefinitely unless it is suspended or revoked or an application is made that would involve an application to vary the license, such as a layout charge or change to license hours. Personal license. Personal license. A personal license is issued by a local licensing board in the district where the personal license holder lives. All premises must have a named premises manager who must be a personal license holder, although premises may have additional personal license holders if they wish. A personal license holder must authorise each sale or service of alcohol in the premises, although the premises license holder can give a general authorisation to any trained staff aged 18 or over. A personal license holder must be 18 or over and hold a recognised training qualification such as a sitting guild certificate for Scottish personal license holders. A personal license lasts for 10 years unless suspended or revoked, although there is a stipulation that training must be renewed every 5 years by an approved trainer. Occasional license Occasional license An occasional license allows the sale or service of alcohol on an unlicensed premises for up to 14 days. Applications for an occasional license can be made by personal license holders, premises license holders, voluntary clubs and organisations or members clubs. Members clubs and voluntary organisations are restricted to a minimum of four occasional licences lasting four or more days and a further 12 occasional licences lasting for less than four days, up to a maximum of no more than 56 days in total of any 12 month period. Premises license, member clubs. Club license. Official members clubs such as golf clubs or student unions do require a premises license. However, clubs do not require a named premises manager and do not require a personal license holder to authorise the sale or service of alcohol on the premises. Clubs are also exempt from local licensing board policies or decisions in regards to over provision. Premises license. National mandatory conditions. Every premises license will have national mandatory conditions attached to it. Alcohol cannot be sold on the premises without a named premises manager or where this person does not hold a personal license or has had their license suspended or revoked or if they have failed to undertake a licensing qualification except members clubs. Every sale of alcohol must be authorised by a personal license holder except members clubs. Alcohol must be sold on the premises in accordance with the operating plan. All staff who sell alcohol must be trained and a record of their training must be kept on the premises. 72 hour rule, price alteration. Where the price of alcohol is to change, that change must be implemented prior to trading. The price of that alcohol or any other alcohol cannot be varied within 72 hours of that change on licence sales. Where the price of alcohol is to change for off licence sales, that change must be implemented prior to trading. The price of that alcohol cannot be varied within 72 hours of the change off licence sales. However, off licence sales may alter the price of any other alcoholic drinks within the 72 hour period, subject to the change being made prior to trading off licence sales. No irresponsible drink promotions are allowed. Alcohol for consumption off the premises can only be displayed in two areas, one of which must not be accessible to the general public, example, behind the counter or bar area. There is an exception for distilleries and other similar visitor attractions. Premises licence fees must be paid annually to the local council. Free tap water must be available, on licence only. Reasonably priced non-alcoholic drinks must be available for sale, on licence only. There must be a notice at the entrance to the premises stating if under 18s are allowed and if so, onto which parts of the premises, on licence only. If children under 5 are allowed, there must be baby changing facilities 
on licence only. If children under five are allowed, there must be baby changing facilities for both male and female customers, on licence only. Drinks promotions can only take place in the designated area or tasting room, off licence only. Drinks promotions cannot take place within 200 metres of the boundary of the premises, off licence only. Age verification policy. Where you believe a person attempting to buy alcohol is under 25 years old, you must ask and see photographic identification that proves that they are over 18 years. Irresponsible drinks promotions. These include any promotion likely to appeal to a person under 18. Anything that involves a free or reduced price alcoholic drink with the purchase of one or more drinks, which don't have to be alcoholic. Anything that involves a free or reduced price measure of an alcoholic drink with the purchase of one or more measures of the drink on licence only. Providing unlimited amounts of alcohol for a set price, including the entrance fee, on licence only. Anything that encourages a person to buy or consume larger measures than they had intended, on licence only. Anything based on the strength of alcohol. Anything that rewards or encourages people to drink alcohol quickly. Anything that offers alcohol as a prize or reward unless that alcohol is in a sealed container and then consumed off the premises. For example, you can win a bottle of whiskey at a raffle but it must be taken home and consumed off the premises. Conditions for late opening premises. Premises that are open after 1am will have additional conditions attached to the licence. A trained first aider must be on the premises at all times, between 1am and 5am or closing. Late opening premises that have a capacity of more than 250 people, for example a nightclub, must also have a personal licence holder on the premises at all times between 1am and 5am or closing. Door stewards, SIA licensed only at the entrances between 1am and 5am or closing. Policies for evacuating the premises and for preventing the misuse of drugs. CCTV, persons checking the toilets. Other conditions. Licensing boards can also choose to add further conditions to the licence called discretionary conditions and will also have local conditions which are conditions that are relevant within their own area. The different types of premises licence conditions under section 27 of the Act. Key points. With the exception of members clubs, the Licensing Scotland Act 2005 states that all premises must have two types of licence to operate. Premises licence and personal licence. Premises licence. The premises licence is issued by the local licensing board where the premises is located. The premises licence will stipulate whether the premises is on licence, off licence or both. It will also stipulate the actual licensing hours. Every premises must have a named premises manager who is responsible for the daily running of the premises. The premises manager must be a personal licence holder and can only be named as premises manager for one premises. Premises licence. The premises licence does not expire and will last indefinitely unless it is suspended, surrendered, revoked or there is an application to alter the licence, variation application, to change the layout, permitted hours or some other change. A personal licence is issued by the local licensing board where the applicant lives and may differ from the licensing board that issues the premises licence. Every premises must at least have one personal licence holder, the premises manager. However, most premises will have several personal licence holders within the staff. Personal licence. To hold a personal licence, you must be 18 or over and must have undertaken a recognised training qualification. The personal licence lasts for 10 years unless suspended or revoked, although 
there is a stipulation to retrain every five years. The personal licence is valid in any licensed premises in Scotland. Personal licence. A personal licence holder can authorise the sale of alcohol by trained staff aged 18 or over. A personal licence holder can also train staff in accordance with the schedule of training set by the Scottish Government. Occasional licence. An occasional licence allows alcohol to be sold in an unlicensed premises for a period of up to 14 days. Applications for an occasional licence can be made to the local licensing board by a premises manager, personal licence holder, members club or by a voluntary organisation. Occasional licence. Voluntary organisations and members clubs are restricted as to the quantity of occasional licences that they may have in any 12 month period. The restrictions are Occasional licence No more than four licences lasting four days or more and 12 licences lasting for less than four days up to a maximum of 56 days in any 12 month period. Members clubs Members clubs only require one licence to sell alcohol, which is a premises licence. Members clubs do not require to have a named premises manager on their operating plan or as part of their premises licence. Members clubs also do not require a personal licence holder to sell or authorise the sale of alcohol. Clubs are also exempt from local licensing board's policies on over-provision. Over-provision is where it is decided that there are too many licensed premises in a particular location. Licensing boards have a duty to assess over-provision. Application for premises licence can be refused on grounds of over-provision, but as previously stated, members clubs are exempt from assessments of over-provision. What constitutes an unlicensed sale? Server training 8 of 16. Unlicensed sale. An unlicensed sale. All premises that sell alcohol must have a license or an occasional license. If the premises doesn't have a license, they cannot sell alcohol. To do so would be deemed to be an unlicensed sale. However, there is an exception for premises that are exempt from licensing legislation and premises that sell alcohol to trade. What constitutes an unlicensed sale? Key points. Unlicensed sale of alcohol is a serious offence and carries a maximum fine of up to £20,000 if convicted. All premises that sell alcohol must have a premises licence or an occasional licence and the sale must be in accordance with the conditions of the premises licence or occasional licence. Not to do so would be an unlicensed sale. However, there are some exceptions if the premises is an exempt premises or where alcohol is sold to the trade. Special provision for clubs under section 125 of the Act. Server training 9 of 16. Members clubs. As you have previously learned, members clubs only require one licence to sell alcohol, which is a premises licence. Members clubs do not require to have a named premises manager on their operating plan or as part of their premises licence. Members clubs also do not require a personal licence holder to sell or authorise the sale of alcohol, but do require at least one personal licence holder as part of their conditions. This could be a manager or member of the committee. Special provisions for clubs under section 125 of the Act. Key points. Premises license, members clubs. Club license, official members clubs such as golf clubs or student unions do require a premises license. However, clubs do not require a named premises manager and do not require a personal license holder to authorise the sale or service of alcohol on the premises. 
Clubs are also exempt from local licensing board policies or decisions in regards to over provision. You have now completed the next three topics of training. The different types of premises license condition under section 27 of the Act. What constitutes an unlicensed sale? Special provisions for clubs under section 125 of the Act. You will now complete another short progress test. Please pause the film on answer if you need more time. The answer will reveal three seconds later. This is not a written progress test. The answers are to inform you if you have understood the information. Should you answer any of the questions incorrectly or are unsure of the answer, please review the relevant section of the training film or discuss the questions with your personal licence holder or trainer. Good luck! Progress Test 3 Under the Licensing Scotland Act 2005, excluding members clubs, how many of which types of licence is required for a premises to sell alcohol? Two licences, a premises licence and a personal licence. A premises licence authorises the premises to sell alcohol. Personal licence authorises a person to sell or supervise the sale of alcohol. A recognised training qualification such as City and Guild Certificate for Scottish Personal Licence Holders is required for a personal licence. But at what age can you become a personal licence holder? Eighteen years or older. To become a personal licence holder, you must be 18 years or older and have undertaken a recognised training qualification. Every premises licence will have conditions attached to it, called National Mandatory Conditions. Which type of premises would also have additional conditions? Late opening premises. Premises that are open after 1am are regarded as late opening premises and will have additional conditions attached. Late opening premises with a capacity of over 250 people will have further conditions attached. What is an unlicensed sale? An unlicensed sale is where a premises does not have a premises licence or occasional licence and or the conditions of such licence is not satisfied. All premises that sell alcohol must have a premises or occasional licence. If the premises does not have a licence, it would be regarded as an unlicensed sale. Although there is an exception for premises that sell to trade and premises that are exempt. How long does a premises licence and personal licence last for? A premises licence lasts indefinitely. A personal licence lasts for 10 years. A premises licence lasts indefinitely unless it is suspended, surrendered, revoked or there is a change that requires a variation application for the premises. A personal licence lasts for 10 years although there is a condition to retrain after 5 years to keep the licence valid. Proof of age under sections 102 and 108 of the Act and the sale of alcohol to children and young persons. Scotland Regulations 2007, SSI 2007-93 as amended by SSI 2007-313. Underagers, your responsibilities. 
Most people are aware that the legal age for buying alcohol is 18. Your biggest responsibilities under the 2005 Act are to ensure that alcohol is sold responsibly and that you do not sell to anyone under the age of 18. What proof of age is acceptable? If you are uncertain, you must ask for proof of age. The law is very clear. If you have asked for proof of age and it isn't provided, alcohol should not be sold. The following kinds of proof of age are approved by the Act. 1. Proof of Age Standard Scheme Pass. The most common is a young Scott car. 2. European photocab driving licence and 3. A passport. Proof of age standard scheme. Pass. Young Scott card. Things to remember. Check the pass hologram looks authentic. Check date of birth and that the person would be 18 years or older. Check the picture looks like the actual person with no signs of tampering. Although the pass scheme and Young Scots cards are acceptable by law as proof of age, some premises do not accept them. Please check with your premises manager if the pass scheme is acceptable on your premises. European photo card driving licence and provisional licence. Things to remember. Check the hologram looks authentic. Check date of birth and that the person would be 18 years or older. Check that the picture looks like the person and there is no signs of tampering. Passport. Things to remember. Check the holograms look authentic. Check date of birth and that the person would be 18 years or over. Check that the picture actually looks like the person and there is no signs of tampering. Other identifications acceptable by law. Ministry of Defence Form 90, Defence Identity Card, a biometric immigration document, also known as Biometric Residence Permit, BRP, a national identity card issued by an EU member state, not the UK. Please check with your premises manager if these are acceptable on your premises. In October 2011, the Licensing Scotland Act 2005 was further amended by the introduction of a new mandatory condition for all premises licence and occasional licences. This amendment provides a national mandatory condition that there must be an age verification policy in relation to the sale of alcohol on the premises. The law has stipulated a minimum age of 25 years for the policy. When it appears that the customer attempting to buy alcohol may be under 25 years of age. So if you believe the customer is under 25 years old, irrelevant if you think they're over 18 years, you must ask and see proof of age. If they look under 25 years, then they must prove that they are 18 years or more. This age verification policy is law. It is a national mandatory licensing condition. The law states that acceptable proof of age must be valid, in date not expired, photographic identification of either passport, European photocab driving licence, full or provisional, proof of age standard scheme, pass, such as a young Scott card. A Ministry of Defence Form 90, Defence Identity Card, a Biometric Residence Permit, BRP, an EU Identity Card, not UK. Fake Identification There are many types and styles of fake identification. A genuine identification belonging to someone else. This is when someone attempts to use a real ID that perhaps belongs to an older family member, friend or a stolen ID. Always check that the photograph looks like the person using the identification. Calculate the age. If the person looks 15 to 19 and the ID says they are 36 years old, something isn't right. If in any doubt, it's your legal responsibility to refuse service. 
a genuine identification that's been altered. This is when someone attempts to tamper with or alter a genuine ID. Most likely the photograph will have been replaced. Or the date of birth will be changed. Watch for an actual photograph attached to the ID, perhaps with a plastic coating laminated, covering the genuine picture ID. New acceptable identification has the photograph printed directly onto the ID. The identification should feel flat and smooth. Purchased fake ID. Some websites sell fake or novelty ID, making it easy to acquire. The photograph will be printed directly onto the ID card. Some will even have holograms and other security features, making it look more genuine, but to keep from breaking laws regarding counterfeit documents, novelty ID may look like a genuine driving licence, but will use alternative terms such as motorcycle permit, international driving permit, national identification, European driving permit, or similar. Be aware and vigilant. Some may look authentic. If you suspect that a proof of age photograph identification is false, you must review service and ask the person to leave the premises. You can ask that the person hands over the fake identification, however, only a police officer can seize it. Age verification Checking photographic identification What's acceptable by law as proof of age? Proof of age standard scheme, pass. European photo card driving licence, passport, EU identity card, not UK, defence identity card, biometric residence permit, BRP, the six step process, step number one, if the person looks under 25, ask for ID, no ID, no service. Step number two, check the ID, is it real? Has it been tampered with? Step number three. Check the pass or security holograms. Is it genuine? Step number four. Check the photograph. Does it match the person in front of you? Step number five. Check the date of birth. Is the person 18 years or over? Step number six, check the actual person. Are you satisfied with their age? If in any doubt, it's your legal responsibility to refuse service. Your premises may have additional policies in place. These must include having a 25s policy, where you ask everyone that looks under 25 for proof of age. They could also include having clear signs of what proof of age is accepted, using a refusals book. These are books where every refusal is recorded. Display notice. Licensed premises must also display a notice at all times, which must be clearly visible to anyone wanting to purchase alcohol. The notice must include It is an offence for any person under the age of 18 to buy or attempt to buy alcohol on these premises. It is also an offence for any other person to buy or attempt to buy alcohol on these premises for a person under the age of 18. Where there is doubt as to whether a person attempting to buy alcohol on these premises is 18 or over, alcohol will not be sold to the person, except on production of evidence showing the person to be 18 or over. 
addition to the statutory notice at each point of sale, it is recommended that age verification 25 signage is clearly promoted and visible also at each point of sale. Age verification 25 signage should stipulate that if a person is believed to look under 25, then they will need to show acceptable photo identification to prove that they are at least 18 years old. Who's first place? Uh, can I get a Budweiser, please? Um, hey, Bud, darling. Uh, just a pen for me. Can I have a glass of Rosaline, please? Can I get a bottle of Budweiser, please? He seems really, really nervous. Mm, I'd say he was about 16 or 17. The law is very clear. If you don't believe the person to look 25 years or older, then you must ask for ID. I'm afraid as you don't look over 25, I'm going to have to ask for some form of identification. Can I have a pint of lager and a rosy wine? I'm not sure. This couple look about 18 or 19, but I can't be certain. The law is very clear. Even if you think they are over 18, if they don't look 25 or over, then you must ask for ID. OK, um, I'm sorry, but as you look under 25, I'm going to have to ask you to provide some form of ID. That's no more of that. Can I get a bud, darling? He's far too overconfident. He's definitely not 18. I'd say about 17. I'm afraid as you don't look over 25, I'm going to have to ask for some form of identification. Honestly, I left it in my jean, or my other jeans. I'm 18. The law is very clear. No matter what excuses are given, if you ask for ID and it is not shown, you must refuse service. Honestly, I left it in my jean, or my other jeans. I'm 18. Well, I'm afraid it's company policy. No ID, no service. All right then. Proof of age under sections 102 and 108 of the Act and the sale of alcohol to children and young persons. Key points. Underagers, your responsibilities. Most people are aware that the legal age for buying alcohol is 18. Your biggest responsibilities under the 2005 Act are to ensure that alcohol is sold responsibly and that you do not sell to anyone under the age of 18. What proof of age is acceptable? If someone attempting to purchase alcohol does not look 25 or over, then you must ask for proof of age. The law states that if you have asked for proof of age and it isn't provided, then you must refuse service. The following types of proof of age are approved by the Act. Proof of age standard scheme, pass. The most common is a young Scott card. European photo card driving licence. Passport. Other acceptable forms of proof of age are EU European Union identity card, not from UK. Biometric residence permit, BRP. Ministry of Defence form 90, defence ID card. Display notice. Licensed premises must display a statutory notice at each point where alcohol sales are made. The notice must say It is an offence for any person under the age of 18 to buy or attempt to buy alcohol on these premises. It is also an offence for any other person to buy or attempt to buy alcohol on these premises for a person under the age of 18. Where there is doubt as to whether a person attempting to buy alcohol on these premises is 18 or over, alcohol will not be sold to the person except on production of evidence showing the person to be 18 or over. In addition to the statutory notice at each point of sale, it is recommended that age verification 25 signage is clearly promoted and visible also at each point of sale. Age verification 25 signage should stipulate that if a person is believed to look under 25, then they will need to show acceptable photo identification to prove that they are at least 18 years old. Test purchasing of alcohol under section 105.2 of the Act. Server training 11 of 16. Test purchasing. The police and local authorities have a responsibility for the enforcement of legislation relating to the sale of age-restricted products, such as alcohol, tobacco, glue, knives, 
and fireworks. The police regularly use test purchasing to check compliance with the laws concerning the sale of age-restricted products in shops and licensed premises. As part of test purchasing on licensed premises, the police will authorise a person under 18 to attempt to buy alcohol. If the person is sold alcohol, then the police officers will enter the building and charge the server and personal licence holder with the offence. Selling alcohol to someone under the age of 18 is a serious offence. You could be fined up to £5,000, face imprisonment for up to three months or both. In addition, you will almost certainly lose your job. There are strict guidelines regarding test purchasing. The underage cannot deliberately try to look older, such as wearing lots of makeup, and the underage must answer truthfully if asked their age. If someone attempting to purchase alcohol does not look 25 or over, then you must ask for proof of age. If in any doubt, it is your legal responsibility to refuse service. Test purchasing of alcohol under section 105.2 of the Act. Key points. Test purchasing. Test purchasing is one method that police will use to check licensed premises are complying with the law. The police will authorise a person under 18 to attempt to buy alcohol. The underager attempting to purchase alcohol cannot deliberately try to look older and must not lie if asked their age. Test purchasing may also be used for tobacco, fireworks, lottery, glue, DVDs, games, in fact any age restricted product. Best practice as regards standards of service and refusing service. Server training 12 of 16. Working in a licensed premises. Working in a licensed premises can be fun and rewarding, but it can also be challenging and difficult at times. Whether you're working in a bar, shop, nightclub or restaurant, you will need to adapt to many different roles to be a successful server. In serving alcohol, there are many aspects to your job. A police officer, ensuring no one breaks the law. A salesperson, knowing about your products. A cleaner, making sure the premises are clean and tidy. A good host, creating a welcoming, friendly atmosphere. A safety officer, reducing risks for customers, staff and yourself. A police officer, ensuring no one breaks the law. Server training allows you to have the knowledge to serve and sell alcohol responsibly and within the law. Your responsibility as a server includes enforcing the law within the premises. There will be many occasions when you need to ask for ID, refuse service and possibly ask persons to leave the premises. This should always be done respectfully, politely and calmly. On licensed premises. Part of creating the right atmosphere is about encouraging people to behave in a decent manner. To do this, you must set standards. Shouting, swearing, drunkenness, singing, chanting, aggressive or rowdy behaviour are all bad for business. Don't allow bad behaviour to chase away good customers. If you don't immediately put a stop to bad behaviour, the behaviour will get worse and worse. Set good standards quickly. It's far easier to stop bad behaviour at the start. A salesperson, knowing about your products. Later in this training film, you will learn about trades descriptions, different types of alcohol and how to calculate the number of units of alcohol in drinks. Depending on the type of premises that you work in, will depend on the products that are available for sale. A good salesperson will learn as much as possible regarding the premises products. Take time to study the menus, wine lists, bar tariff or just the variety of stock on offering your premises. Ask your premises manager about the stock and products. A cleaner. Making sure the premises are clean and tidy. Psychologically we all behave better and more disciplined in a tidy, clean and well kept premises. Dirty counters, tables or boxes lying in shopping aisles leads to frustration and complaints. If a 
person leans on a counter or table and gets their clothes wet or stained from spillages. This could cause complaints or conflict. Cleaning customers' tables regularly emphasises better customer service and also lets you monitor customers' activities and behaviour. A good host, creating a welcoming, friendly atmosphere. Everyone likes to feel special. Always make an effort to welcome people. Top of all, customer satisfaction poll is being acknowledged. This is especially important when you're busy. Three customers at a bar all waiting patiently. A fourth customer steps up to the bar for service. A polite hello and I'll be with you shortly lets the customer know that they have been seen and acknowledged. Many people choose the place to go to purely based on the attitude of staff and standard of service. Good service leads to good customers. Knowing what your regulars like and taking an interest in their stories is part of good customer service. Always remember to smile, give a smile, get one back. A safety officer. Reducing risks to customers, staff and yourself. Always be vigilant while serving and circulating around the premises. You should always look out for empty bottles, glasses, rubbish, spills on floor, bags or items blocking walkways and fire exits. Watch for anything that could lead to slips or falls. Remember, some customers may be old and frail or disabled. You have a duty of care to keep walkways and fire exits clear at all times. Any spills should be wiped up immediately to prevent the possibility of customers, staff or yourself being injured. Dealing with complaints. It would be wrong to suggest that there will never be any complaints or conflict in the premises where you work. But depending on the type and style of premises, location and customer's age group, this may be a regular or infrequent occurrence. Nobody really likes to deal with dissatisfied, angry customers. But you should always remember that by making the complaint, the customer is giving you the opportunity to resolve and deal with the situation. If you deal with the complaint well and resolve the situation, you will hopefully keep the person as a customer. Your ability to resolve the situation quickly and professionally will stop the problem from perhaps escalating. However, if the complaint is dealt with badly, the customer will feel even more angry and frustrated, perhaps putting your safety at risk. Unhappy customers can lead to bad reputation and a loss of potential future customers. Key points in dealing with a complaint. Listen carefully to the complaint without interrupting. Show that you understand the problem. Apologise. Seek a solution. Things to remember. Keep calm, be objective, do not argue, do not raise your voice. When people are angry and frustrated, they often throw insults. Do not take them personally or retaliate. That would only escalate the situation and may draw the attention of other customers. Remain calm, objective and professional, trying to resolve the situation as quickly as possible. Refusing service. Just like handling complaints, refusing service should be done respectfully and professionally. In an ideal situation, other customers would be unaware of someone being refused service. The law stipulates that you must refuse to serve some people, such as underagers or someone that is drunk. When refusing service to someone without identification, let them know they are welcome back when they can prove their age. If they are underage now, they are still a potential future customer. 
when refusing someone who is drunk, speak slowly and clearly using short sentences and repeating the message over and over. It may be difficult for them to understand you. Avoid using direct terms such as you're drunk, as this will lead to them arguing that they are not drunk. Drunk is often used as a derogatory term. He's a drunk. Instead, it would be better to say, I think you've had a little too much to drink. Backing up the statement with, I'm sorry, I can't save you. I could lose my job. If a person is drunk, their brain will be affected by alcohol. They may have problems understanding you. Speak slowly and clearly, and you may have to repeat yourself several times. But do not get impatient or angry with them. Remain calm and professional. Remember, a drunk customer may be less inhibited and more likely to say or do things out of character. They may also tend to get angry or aggressive quickly. Their actions may be unpredictable. If customers are angry, try to calm down the situation by speaking calmly and quietly. If people or property are threatened, it may be necessary to phone the police. Always keep other staff informed of the situation. Later in the training, we will look at dealing with conflict situation in more depth. When is a customer drunk? Unfortunately, the law doesn't define the term drunk. Most people would say that when a person is unsteady or slurring their words, then they are drunk. Really, the decision is up to you. If you believe a person to be drunk, then legally you can't serve them and must refuse service. The more someone drinks, the less able they are to make informed decisions about their own well-being. This is why it is up to the server to decide who has had enough to drink, not the customer. Key points in refusing service. Be proactive. Approach the person early. Always be polite. Start with an apology. I'm sorry, but... Try to give a reason and enforce your legal responsibility. It's against the law for me to serve you. Keep other staff informed. Be firm. Keep calm. Be patient. Refusals book. The licensing standards officer will want to know that you are complying with the laws on refusing service. One of the easiest ways is to keep a refusals book. A refusals book will help to demonstrate your compliance with the law. Every refusal should be entered into the refusals book by the server involved. This should include the date and time of the incident, the name or description of the person, what item they tried to purchase, which server was involved and why service was refused. An accurate record of refusals can show that you are aware of your responsibilities under the law. Can I get a bud, darling? I'm afraid as you don't look over 25, I'm going to have to ask for some form of identification. Honestly, I left it in my jean, the mother jeans. I am 18. Well, I'm afraid it's company policy. No ID, no service. Alright then. Best practice as regards standards of service and refusing service. Key points. In serving alcohol, there are many roles to your job. A police officer, ensuring no one breaks the law. A salesperson, knowing about your products. 
a cleaner, making sure the premises are clean and tidy. A good host, creating a welcoming, friendly atmosphere. A safety officer, reducing risks for customers, staff and yourself. Key points in dealing with a complaint. Listen carefully to the complaint without interrupting. Show that you understand the problem. Apologise. Seek a solution. Things to remember. Keep calm. Be objective. Do not argue. Do not raise your voice. When people are angry and frustrated, they often throw insults, do not take them personally or retaliate. That would only escalate the situation and may draw the attention of other customers. Remain calm, objective and professional, trying to resolve the situation as quickly as possible. Key points in refusing service. Be proactive. Approach the person early. Always be polite. Start with an apology. I'm sorry, but... Try to give a reason and enforce your legal responsibility. It's against the law for me to serve you. Keep other staff informed. Be firm. Keep calm. Be patient. Refusals book. To show your compliance with the law, record all refusals in the refusals book. You have now completed the next three topics of training. Proof of age under sections 102 and 108 of the Act and the sale of alcohol to children and young persons. Test purchasing of alcohol. Best practice as regards standards of service and refusing service. You will now complete another short progress test. Please pause the film on answer if you need more time. The answer will reveal three seconds later. This is not a written progress test. The answers are to inform you if you have understood the information. Should you answer any of the questions incorrectly or are unsure of the answer, please review the relevant section of the training film or discuss the question with your personal licence holder or trainer. Good luck. Progress test 4. By law, which three standard types of proof of age are acceptable? Pass card. European photo card driving licence. Passport. The law accepts three types of standard proof of age. Pass card, proof of age standard scheme such as Young Scott Card, European Driving Licence, Full or Provisional, Passport. The law also accepts, although your premises may not, a Ministry of Defence Form 90, Defence ID Card, a Biometric Immigration Document, a National ID Card issued by an EU Member State other than the UK. Question 2 of 5. Test Purchasing. During test purchasing, what two things can the underager not do? The underager cannot deliberately try to look older. The underager cannot lie if asked their age. Test purchasing is where an underager is authorised by the police to attempt to buy alcohol. The underager cannot deliberately try to look older and the underager cannot lie if asked what age they are. Under which circumstances should you ask someone attempting to buy alcohol for identification? If the person attempted to buy alcohol does not look 25 or over. The law is very clear. You must ask for acceptable identification when the person does not look 25 or over. Why should you record refusals of service in a refusals book? It shows you are complying with the law. Recording refusals shows licensing standard officers police and other council officials that you are complying with the law and are aware of your responsibilities. Should the licence holder ever face prosecution, then you must show they took reasonable precautions to prevent any member of staff from breaking the law, such as training records and refusals book. 
Question five of five. When dealing with complaints, what are the four main things that you should do? Listen carefully without interrupting. Apologise. Show you understand the problem or situation. Seek a solution. You must also remember to keep calm, be polite, don't argue, be professional and if insulted, don't retaliate or take it personally. Offences under the Act, particularly those involving persons under the age of 18, serve for training 13 of 16. Offences under the Act, especially those involving persons under the age of 18. OK, so let's have a look at some of the rules and laws. For staff, it is an offence to be drunk on the premises and to sell alcohol to anyone who is drunk. It is an offence for staff to be on the premises while drunk. This includes licence holders and the premises manager. It is an offence to sell alcohol to anyone who is drunk. It is an offence to keep smuggled goods on premises, so no duty-free booze, sex or anything similar. It is an offence to keep smuggled goods on the premises. This includes personal items not for retail use. Failure to display notices regarding underage sales, measures and a summary of the licence is an offence. It is an offence not to display statutory notices and a summary of the licence. A photocopy is not acceptable. It is an offence for customers to attempt to enter licensed premises while drunk unless the person resides there. It is an offence for a drunk person to enter a licensed premise unless the person lives there. So if you're drunk, you can enter the hotel to go to your room, but not the bar. It is an offence for a drunk person to enter a licensed premises. It is an offence to behave in a disorderly manner and refuse to leave when asked to do so by a responsible person. It is an offence for a drunk person to refuse to leave when asked to do so by a responsible person, server, licence holder, door staff or a police officer. It is an offence to be in a licensed premises while drunk and incapable of looking after yourself, to obtain or attempt to obtain alcohol for a drunk person, also for a drunk person to behave in a disorderly manner or to use obscene or indecent language is also an offence. It is an offence being in a licensed premises while drunk and incapable of looking after yourself. It is an offence to obtain or attempt to obtain alcohol for a drunk person or helping a drunk person consume alcohol. It is an offence for a drunk person to behave in a disorderly manner. It is an offence for a drunk person to use obscene or indecent language to the annoyance of another person. One of the biggest responsibilities is to ensure that alcohol has been sold responsibly and within the law. It is a key responsibility that you do not sell alcohol to anyone under the age of 18. It is an offence to sell the cure confectionery to anyone under the age of 16. It is an offence for servers or licence holders to sell alcohol to someone who is under 18 or for a responsible person to allow it. It is an offence to sell liqueur chocolates to someone under 16. And it is also an offence to allow a person under 18 to sell, supply or serve alcohol. It is an offence to allow a person under 18 to sell, supply or serve alcohol. Exceptions. Someone under 18 can sell alcohol to be consumed off the premises. However, the sale of alcohol must be specifically authorised by a personal licence holder. A person under 18 may serve alcohol to be consumed on the premises with a meal in an unlicensed premises when specifically authorised by a personal licence holder. It is an offence to allow alcohol to be consumed in an unlicensed premises by anyone under the age of 18. Exceptions. A young person aged 16 or 17 may consume some types of alcohol with a meal if purchased by a person 18 or older. The types of alcohol allowed to be consumed as part of a meal is beer, cider, wine, perry. Your premises may not allow this. Check with your premises manager. Offences under the Act particularly those involving persons under the age of 18.
Key points. It is an offence for staff or licence holders to be drunk on the premises, sell or serve alcohol to a drunk person, keep or allow smuggled goods on the premises, sell alcohol to someone who is under 18 or for a responsible person to allow it. Allow alcohol to be consumed by persons under 18 in an unlicensed premises. Exception. A person aged 16 or 17 may consume beer, cider, wine, perry with a meal if purchased by an adult 18 years or over. Deliver alcohol to anyone under the age of 18 unless it is part of their job to take in deliveries. Allow anyone under the age of 18 to deliver alcohol unless it is part of their job or for a responsible person to allow it to be delivered. To sell liqueur confectionery to a person under 16. Sell alcohol to trade unless it is from a premises used specifically for that purpose. Deliver alcohol to private residential address between 12 midnight and 6 a.m. Deliver alcohol from a vehicle unless the actual records of the sale are carried by the person making the delivery. Sell alcohol on a moving vehicle such as party bus, limousine, coach, bus tour, unless it has a premises or occasional licence. Not have on display a summary of the premises licence, statutory display notices, notice regarding underage sales. Allow a breach of the peace, drunkenness or other disorderly conduct on the premises, such as no swearing, fighting, aggressive conduct. It is an offence for customers to buy or attempt to buy alcohol if they are under 18 years, unless as part of a test purchase. Send a person under 18 years to obtain alcohol. Buy alcohol for a person under 18 years old. Exception. A person aged 18 or over can purchase beer, cider, wine, perry to be consumed by a 16 or 17 year old with a meal. Allow a person under 18 to consume alcohol in an unlicensed premises. Exception. A person aged 16 or 17 may consume beer, cider, wine, perry with a meal if purchased by an adult 18 years or over. Enter or attempt to enter a licensed premises while drunk unless the person resides there such as a hotel. Be drunk and to behave in a disorderly manner. Be on a licensed premises while drunk and incapable of looking after themselves. Obtain or attempt to obtain alcohol for a drunk person or helping a drunk person to consume alcohol. Be drunk and behave in a disorderly manner. Be drunk and to refuse to leave when asked to by a responsible person or a police officer such as server, license holder, door staff. Be drunk and use obscene or indecent language to the annoyance of another person. Penalties When you sell or serve alcohol, you must act within the law. If you break the law or allow others to break the law, you can face prosecution. All offences can result in a fine, imprisonment or both. The personal licence holder may also be charged with offence and the premises may lose its premises licence. Vicarious liability Vicarious liability, others being held accountable for your actions. As a server, your premises manager and or personal licence holder is deemed to have vicarious liability for your actions. Legal proceedings may be taken against them as well as you. Learn your legal responsibilities. Selling alcohol to someone under 18 could result in a maximum fine of £5,000 and or a maximum of three months imprisonment. Failure to comply with the law will be deemed as gross misconduct and in addition to being charged and arrested, you will probably lose your job. Defence A person charged with the offence of selling alcohol to someone under the age of 18 previously would have been able to use the defence that they believed the person to be 18 or over. However, 
As Verification 25 is now a national mandatory condition, the law will no longer accept that as a defence. This means that your only defence now would be either that you believed the person to be 25 or older and that no reasonable person would suspect from their appearance that they were under 25, that you asked for proof of age and what you were shown by them would have convinced any reasonable person. The licence holder. A licence holder must ensure that they and their staff take all necessary steps to avoid committing an offence. In their defence, they must be able to show that they took reasonable precautions to prevent a member of staff from breaking the law, such as staff training, staff training records and refusal book. When is a person drunk? A number of the offences in the Licensing Scotland Act 2005 refer to people who are drunk. But when is a person drunk? Although the law doesn't define the word drunk, a person who is seriously affected by alcohol is likely to be considered drunk by the courts. It is normally deemed that when you have consumed enough alcohol to the extent that it affects your speech and balance, that you would be considered as drunk. However, it is up to the server to determine if someone is drunk. If you think a person is drunk, then you legally cannot serve them. Proxy sales agents. Proxy sales on behalf of someone else or in relation to alcohol, the purchase of alcohol for someone under 18 on their behalf. This is most common in off license premises and it can be difficult to know if someone is buying alcohol for underagers. Most proxy sales are made by parents, siblings, or older friends. However, it is very common for underagers to ask complete strangers outside the licensed premises and offer, some agents may demand, a small commission for their services. Many of the adults acting as agents will be unaware that they are committing a serious offence. If you suspect that the person is acting as an agent, you should ask who the alcohol is for. Make them aware that acting as an agent is an offence. What to look out for? Young people hanging around outside, probably in groups. Look out for them talking to or approaching adults, handing money over to adults. If you know youths are pestering adults outside your premises to buy age-restricted products, call the police on 101. In an emergency, always use 999. People buying alcohol with lots of change, paying with separate amounts of money. If a receipt is requested, it may be used to collect payment from underagers. Look at the type and quantity of the products to reinforce or allay any suspicions. Wanting different drinks in separate carrier bags. Be aware of young people with adults who appear to be selecting the drink. They may exit the premises leaving the adult to pay or remain with the adult. Follow on purchase. If a sale has been refused, be aware of an adult coming in shortly afterwards looking to purchase the same items. Person and product. Do the products match the person? A pensioner buying alcopops, you may wish to ask who it's for. Product quantity. If an adult asks to buy two packets of 10 cigarettes when 20 are cheaper, or two or more half bottles or quarter bottles of spirits, it may be for underagers. If you do believe that the person is acting as an agent for underagers, then you must refuse service. Common law. All staff, servers and licence holders have the common law right to refuse service or entry. Despite what many people think, there is not a human right to be served or gain access. The Human Rights Act 1998 imposes obligations on public authorities, not private businesses like shops or pubs. Although there is no obligation to give a reason to refuse service or gain entry, you cannot refuse service because of race, religion, sexual orientation or disability, as this would breach the Qualities Act 2010 and the Disability Act 1995. Units of alcohol. The relationship between units and the strength of different alcoholic drinks. Server training, 14 of 16. Units of alcohol. Understanding alcohol. When we refer to alcohol, we use terms to determine the strength, such as units and ABV, alcohol by volume. 
But what exactly does this terminology mean? ABV, alcohol by volume, refers to the dilution rate or the percentage of pure alcohol, ethanol, contained in the alcoholic drink. So, for a whisky at 40% ABV, there is 40% of pure alcohol, ethanol, in the actual whisky. The remaining 60% is mainly water. Similarly, in a beer at 6% ABV, there is 6% of pure alcohol, ethanol, in the actual beer. The remaining 94% is mainly water, colouring and flavouring. Units of alcohol are a measure of the volume of pure alcohol, ethanol, in an alcoholic drink. One unit is 10 millilitres of pure alcohol in a drink. As whisky is normally 40% ABV, a 25 millilitre measure of whisky would have 40% of pure alcohol in it, which is 10 millilitres, and 10 millilitres is one unit. So, a standard 25 millilitre measure of whisky would be one unit. Calculating units. Using units is a simple way of representing a drink's alcohol content. It was first introduced in the UK in 1987 to help people keep track of their drinking. The BMA, British Medical Association, set guidelines for healthy drinking in units. For a society that's drinking habits were changing with stronger beers, alcopops, shots and binge drinking. Units of alcohol are easy to calculate. You can work out how many units are in a drink easily by using a simple calculation. If possible, get a calculator. Your phone may have one. Volume of drink in millilitres multiplied by strength of the drink, ABV, divided by 1000. A 25 millilitre measure of whisky, 40% ABV, 25 millilitres multiplied by 40 ABV equals 1000 divided by 1000 is equal to 1 unit. A 250 millilitre glass of wine, 12% ABV. 250 millilitres multiplied by 12 ABV is equal to 3000 divided by 1000 is equal to 3 units. A pint of premium lager 5.2% ABV. Okay, first thing to know is a metric pint is 568 millilitres. 568 millilitres multiplied by 5.2 ABV equals 2,953 divided by 1,000 equals 2.95 units. A 275 millilitre bottle of Alcopop, 5.5% ABV. 275 millilitres multiplied by 5.5 ABV equals 1,512. Divided by 1,000 is equal to 1.5 units. Put into perspective, one nip, 25 millilitres of whiskey, equals one unit. Two large glasses of wine, could be as much as six or seven whiskies. Could you possibly tell me how many units of alcohol there is in this? Yes, of course. Wait a minute and I'll work it out for you. It's a 250ml glass and it's 13% alcohol in the bottle. Divide that by a thousand and there is 3.25 units of alcohol in your glass. Units of alcohol. The relationship between units and the strength of different alcoholic drinks. Key points. Units of alcohol. Understanding alcohol. Knowing about units and how to calculate units lets you have the knowledge to inform others. Remember, protecting and improving public health. Whilst we are not suggesting that after two glasses of wine you announce that's the customer's daily quota, but if a customer asks for information as a server, you should be able to provide it. Calculating units. Volume of drink in millilitres multiplied by strength of the drink, ABV, divided by 1000. A 35 millilitre measure of vodka, 37.5% ABV. 35 millilitres multiplied by 37.5 ABV is equal to 1,312 divided by 1,000 is equal to 
1.31 units. The sensible drinking limits for males and females recommended by the British Medical Association. Server training 15 of 16. Alcohol and health. Scotland, like many other countries, has a social culture based on alcohol use. Around 90% of the adult population consume alcohol. Drinking is associated with fun, parties and celebrations. And if drunk in moderation, alcohol can be compatible with a healthy lifestyle. However, drinking to excess and binge drinking has left Scotland with a bad reputation and prevailing health and social problems. The health and stability of a large number of the UK and Scottish population is being harmed directly or indirectly by excessive alcohol consumption. In Scottish hospitals, alcohol admissions have quadrupled and alcohol-related death rates have nearly tripled since the early 1980s. The cost of alcohol misuse to the Scottish economy has been estimated at around £3.56 billion per year. Alcohol has a direct link to crime and disorder. Statistics from the Scottish Government show that 49% of prisoners and 77% of young offenders were drunk at the time of their offence. In relation to serious assaults, it is estimated that in 63% of all violent crime, the offender was perceived to be drunk or under the influence of alcohol. One Scot dies of an alcohol attributable cause every three hours. It is clear that our drinking habits have changed and that as a nation, our relationship with alcohol has become unbalanced. The Licensing Scotland Act 2005 is one of the measures aimed to address the problems created by alcohol misuse and tackle Scotland's drinking culture. Alcohol is a legal drug and can be very harmful if misused. Drinking too much can cause significant health problems. The BMA, the British Medical Association, and government have set guidelines for low-risk drinking for both men and women. Men, 21 units per week, 3 to 4 units per day, with at least 2 alcohol-free days per week. Women, 14 units per week, 2 to 3 units per day, with at least 2 alcohol-free days per week. The total weekly units should not be drunk in just one or two sessions. No alcohol for 40 hours is advised after heavy drinking, being drunk. Long-term health risks and units of alcohol per week. Men, moderate, less than 21. Hazardous, 21 to 50. Harmful, 50 plus. Women, moderate, less than 14. Hazardous, 14 to 35. And harmful, 35 plus. Drinking and pregnancy. No alcohol at all is best for the unborn baby. Pregnant women or women trying to conceive should not drink at all. However, if they choose to drink, to minimise the risk to the baby, they should not drink more than one to two units once or twice maximum per week. They should never get drunk. Young people and drink. With young people, depending on their age, their internal organs may not be fully developed and even a single unit could have serious consequences to developing organs. Young people also tend to be smaller than adults and have little tolerance to alcohol. They can reach the level of acute alcohol poisoning with far less alcohol than an adult. Misuse of alcohol. Drinking to excess on one occasion could lead to vomiting, temporary memory loss, violent behaviour as offender or victim, unprotected sex, criminal behaviour, vandalism, car crime, theft, breach of peace, risk of stroke, accidents from falling or tripping, unreasonable behaviour, acute alcohol poisoning resulting in coma or death. In addition, people who regularly drink to excess could also risk heart disease, fluorosis, liver disease, cancer, brain damage such as alcoholic dementia, skin problems, fertility problems, acute and chronic pancreatitis and mental health problems. Other problems resulting from alcohol misuse, work problems, relationship problems, financial problems. The sensible drinking limits for males and females recommended by the British Medical Association. Key points. 
Alcohol and Health. The BMA, British Medical Association and Government have set guidelines for low-risk drinking for both men and women. Men, 21 units per week, 3 to 4 units per day, with at least 2 alcohol-free days per week. Women, 14 units per week, 2 to 3 units per day, with at least 2 alcohol-free days per week. The total weekly unit should not be drunk in just one or two sessions. No alcohol for 48 hours is advised after heavy drinking being drunk. Alcohol has a direct link to crime and disorder, including assaults, domestic violence, car crime, vandalism, theft, breach of peace, racism, sexual assault and rape. In fact, alcohol misuse is a contributing factor in many crimes. In relation to serious assaults, it is estimated that in 63% of all violent crimes, the offender was perceived to be drunk or under the influence of alcohol. One Scot dies of an alcohol attributable cause every three hours. Good practice in managing conflict situations. Server training 16 of 16. Managing conflict. When dealing with the public, especially where alcohol is concerned, it is inevitable that there will be conflict situations, such as refusing service, arguments, rowdy behaviour or fights. At some point, you will probably need to deal with angry customers, drunk behaviour, insults, abuse and intimidation. The premises where you work may have a written conflict policy and escalation policy in place. However, all staff should know the basics of what to do in the event of conflict and escalation of conflict. Understanding body language can be very helpful in detecting trouble or how to perceive a conflict situation. It can also assist you in how to effectively deal with the situation. During any conflict, it's normal to feel anxious and nervous. However, if you can practice acting in an assertive manner, it will help you control many situations. Think carefully about your voice and tone, your movements and your gestures. Keep calm and slow things down. You must try to act assertive, not aggressive or passive. Study the body language chart. Always try to be assertive. Posture. Upright, straight, confident. Head. Firm, not rigid, relaxed movements. Eyes. Good eye contact, aware of everyone. Face. Face expression. Fits voice tone. Voice. Assertive and clear to fit content. Hands and arms. Open palms. Relaxed. Moving freely. Walking style. Measured pace. Suited to situation. Take time to study aggressive, angry, violent and passive, weak styles. Remember, always try to be assertive and in control. Managing conflict. Intervene early. Be polite but assertive. Keep calm. Raise voices can lead to aggression. Try to keep barriers between you, counter, table or bar. If it's an argument between customers, remain neutral. When refusing service, explain why service has been refused. Inform the customer of your legal obligation, such as, sorry, but by law I cannot sell alcohol to someone who's under 18, etc. Keep other staff informed. Listen and try to respond. Reacting to trouble. Most conflict can be prevented or controlled in the early stages. However, if a situation has become heated or aggressive before you arrive, it can be a lot harder to control. If a conflict escalates, you must think of your own safety and that of other customers and staff. Call the police if the situation appears to be getting out of hand. A good way to remember all the essential stages is to use the word REACT. R. Request that the parties calm down or leave. E. Explain. Explain that their behaviour is unacceptable. A. Appeal. Appeal to them to please stop. Use phrases like, if you don't stop, I won't be able to serve you. You don't want me to get into trouble. I don't want to have to call the police. C. Confirm. If the customer still refuses to stop the confrontation, repeat any consequences. Ask if there is anything you can do to stop it. T. Take action. Ask the customer to leave. Lead them towards the door. But be careful about using force. If they refuse, call the police. 
Large groups can become boisterous and rowdy, which can easily upset other customers. Large groups need extra care. Speak to them when they have first arrived and lay down ground rules. No drinking games, keep the noise down, have a good night, but not drunk. Build up a relationship early, so it's easier to speak to them later. Find out a few of their names, where they're from, what they're celebrating. Identify the leader and make them responsible for the group's behaviour. Watch them out there drinking. Speak to individuals at the bar. Try to form a good customer relationship. Make it clear that if one person causes trouble, they will all have to leave. Good practice in managing conflict situations. Key points. Managing conflict. During any conflict, it's normal to feel anxious and nervous. However, if you can practice acting in an assertive manner, it will help you to control many situations. Think carefully about your voice and tone, your movements and gestures. Keep calm and slow things down. You must try to act assertive, not aggressive or passive. Early intervention will in most cases stop the situation from escalating. Do not allow yourself to be bullied or intimidated into not acting, breaking the law or allowing the law to be broken. With conflict situations, react early. R. Request that the parties calm down or leave. E. Explain. Explain that their behaviour is unacceptable. A. Appeal. Appeal to them to please stop. Use phrases like, if you don't stop, I won't be able to serve you. You don't want me to get into trouble. I don't want to have to call the police. C. Confirm. If the customer still refuses to stop the confrontation, repeat any consequences. Ask if there is anything you can do to stop it. T. Take action. Ask the customer to leave. Lead them towards the door. But be careful about using force. If they refuse, call the police. If things appear to be escalating, call the police. Keep other staff informed and aware of all situations. Keep a record of all conflicts. Closing time on licence only. Many incidents can occur at closing time between having to refuse to sell anyone more drink, removing unfinished drinks at the end of drinking up time, together with the added problems of clearing the premises of customers. Thinking about closing time in advance and taking proactive steps can help to reduce any conflict situations. Let all customers know when last orders are called. Ensure enough staff are available to serve customers during last orders. Do not sell doubles or double orders. When asking customers to drink up, be friendly and courteous. Try to make sure all exits are manned by staff. Thank the customers for their custom. Politely ask them to try to be quiet when leaving for your neighbours. Ensure no customers leave with their drinks, bottles or glasses. Have taxi information such as local taxi ranks available. Remove all drinks at the end of drinking up time. Additional information. Shoplifting off licence. People often steal alcohol from shops because they are unable to get served or for drug money. Shoplifting often results in physical assaults on shop staff. You cannot accuse someone of shoplifting until they have passed the point of payment and attempted to leave the premises. Demand that the items are returned, but always think of your own safety first. Call the police. There are some preventive measures you could take. Electronic stop tags. Notices that thieves will be prosecuted. CCTV mirrors for hidden areas. Staff at exits. As well as licensing laws, staff working in licensed premises have other legislation and legal responsibilities, such as first aid. All licensed premises must have an accident book located on the premises. The accident book must record any accident or injury by a member of staff, customer or any other person that occurs on the premises or within the legal boundary of the premises. Every premises must have a first aid box. Employers must have appropriate first aid supplies and facilities relevant to the number of staff and capacity of the premises. A person should be appointed to maintain and check the first aid supplies 
and be responsible in the event of an accident or injury occurring. Depending on the size of the premises, your employer may have staff trained in first aid. As a licence stipulation, any premises opened after 1am must have a trained first aider on the premises. The trained first aider must be on the premises between 1am and closing time or 5am, whichever is soonest. Health and safety. Under health and safety laws, you are responsible for your own safety and people around you. Under health and safety law, you have a responsibility to address any potential hazard and either fix the problem where appropriate or notify the hazard to your manager or supervisor. You must also ensure that any persons in the area or likely to come into the area are not put at risk and are made aware of the hazard. For example, an item in a walkway or blocking a fire exit, where possible, move the item as not to allow a hazard. A spillage of liquid. Any spill should be cleaned up immediately to avoid slips. Wet floor signs should be put in place to warn of danger where the possibility of a hazard remains. Example, a leaking pipe and the ongoing problem reported to your manager or supervisor. Your employer must display a health and safety policy notice or provide leaflets detailing information as to their responsibilities and yours. Employers have a duty to provide correct safety equipment or personal protective equipment, PPE, when required. Every chemical used in your workplace requires a data safety sheet or cost sheet, control of substances hazardous to health. This will provide the correct dilution rates, handling procedures and if any PPE or safety equipment is required, such as gloves or protective goggles. The cost sheets will also list the correct first aid procedures should an accident occur. Not all chemicals will require protective clothing or equipment. Employers must provide you with correct and adequate training for the use of chemicals and any equipment that you are required to use. The employer must carry out risk assessment on the premises to highlight any potential problems and reduce the risk to employees, customers and other persons. Smoking The smoking ban came into effect on March 26, 2006. No one is allowed to smoke in an enclosed public space. Premises must display no smoking signs. Customers and staff could be fined £50 if they smoke within the premises. Staff can be fined if they allow smoking within the premises. Premises are not obligated to provide exterior smoking areas, although some do. Disability and Equal Opportunity the law states that those with disabilities must receive the same levels of service and equal access to your premises as those without a disability. Providing equal service to a disabled person is mainly common sense. Such as visual impairments, menus are priceless in large print or take time to read the items and price to the customer. Hearing impairments, look directly at the person, speak normally and it will help the person read your lips or perhaps try pen and paper. Trade descriptions, branding. If a customer asks for a specific brand, such as a grouse whiskey, then you must serve that brand. If you do not stock or sell that particular brand, then you must inform the customer and suggest alternatives. If you do not inform the customer and supply a different brand, then you are breaking the law. This applies to all brands, whether alcoholic, non-alcoholic, or not drink related. Pepsi is not Coca-Cola. Gambling, on license owner. The Gambling Act came into effect on the 1st of September 2007. Licensed premises are allowed two gaming machines, but there are strict regulations and an additional permit is required. Some licensed premises are allowed equal chance gaming, such as bingo or poker, but this is subject to very strict conditions, such as limit on stakes and prizes. Age-related products, off-license only. Some products have age restrictions, over 18 years, alcohol, fireworks, adult magazines, lighter or butane fuel, cigarettes and tobacco, including tobacco-related products, such as cigarette papers, offensive or dangerous weapons, such as knives and glue. Over 16 years. Lottery tickets, scratch cards, fuel, party poppers, liqueur chocolates. Age dependent on classification. Videos, games, DVDs. Food hygiene. Alcohol and drinks are considered food products and must comply with food hygiene laws. Any premises, whether on or off licence, 
that sell snacks or food must comply with these laws. Points that apply to both are Wash your hands before handling unpackaged products, especially fresh foods. Be sure to check the date on products you sell. If a product has a use-by date, it cannot be legally sold after that date. If it has a best before date, you can sell it after that date, but you have to tell the customer it has passed its best. If you handle food, clean up as you go. Make sure all work surfaces and equipment are clean. Ensure that any waste is disposed of properly. Keep bin areas clean to avoid attracting bugs and vermin. On sales only. When serving a drink, take care not to handle the tops or insides of glasses that may come into contact with the drink or customer's mouth. Wash your hands after collecting dirty glasses or smoking before cleaning glasses or pouring drinks. Always serve drinks in a clean glass. Never serve a drink from an optic or font to a glass that has already been used, even if it's for the same person. Keep the ice bucket behind the bar and use tongs or a scoop. Weights and measures, on licence only. Under this law, you must serve certain products in certain measures. Draft beer and cider can only be served in one third, one half or multiples of one half pint. Glasses must have a government stamp to show the quantity poured is accurate unless you are using an approved measured device. From mid-2011, it is proposed that you will also be able to serve in measures of two-thirds of a pint. Spirits, whiskey, gin, vodka and rum can only be served in 25ml and 35ml measures or multiples thereof. There must be a sign stating the law listing the four spirits and which measure applies. The measures used must be government stamped. Ask your manager how to pour an accurate measure. If you under or over pour, you are breaking the law and could be charged. Wines can be served in glasses of 125ml, 175ml or multiples of these or by the bottle or craft. From mid-2011, it is proposed that amounts of less than 75ml will be exempt. Example, for tastings. Fortified wines, for example, Vermont. These must be served in measures of 50 millilitres or multiples thereof. Drugs and drink spiking, on licence only. Under the Misuse of Drugs Act, it is unlawful to be in possession of a controlled substance or intend to supply it. It is also against the law to allow premises to be used for the purpose of producing or supplying controlled drugs. If you come across signs of drug taking or dealing, report this to your manager. Drink spiking is associated with drugs such as GHB and rehypnol. However, one of the most common forms is adding extra alcohol to a person's drink. If you see anyone pouring something into another person's drink, inform your manager and the person whose drink it is. You have now completed the last four topics of training. Offences under the Act, particularly those involving persons under the age of 18. Units of alcohol, the relationship between units and the strength of different alcoholic drinks. The sensible drinking limits for males and females recommended by the British Medical Association. Good practice in managing conflict situations. You will now complete another short progress test. Please pause the film on answer if you need more time. The answer will reveal three seconds later. This is not a written progress test. The answers are to inform you if you have understood the information. Should you answer any of the questions incorrectly or are unsure of the answer, please review the relevant section of the training film or discuss the question with your personal licence holder or trainer. Good luck! Progress Test 5 What does ABV stand for? ABV Alcohol by Volume The strength of the alcoholic drink such as whiskey at 40% ABV What are the sensible drinking limits for men and women per week as recommended by the British Medical Association.
Men, 21 units per week, 3 to 4 units per day. Women, 14 units per week, 2 to 3 units per day. It is recommended that you have at least two alcohol-free days per week and the maximum limits per week are not drunk in just one or two sessions. When dealing with any conflict situation, who should you first inform? Other staff members. Where possible, always inform other staff members prior to dealing with any conflict situation. What is the maximum fine for selling alcohol to a person under the age of 18? £5,000. The maximum fine for selling alcohol to an underager is £5,000 and or a maximum of three months imprisonment. You would probably also lose your job by gross misconduct. The premises may also lose its licence. Question 5 of 5. What is the calculation for how many units are in a drink? Volume of drink, millilitres, multiplied by strength of drink, ABV, divided by 1000. For example, a 25 millilitre measure of 40% whisky, 25 millilitres multiplied by 40 ABV is equal to 1000. Divide the 1000 by 1000 to get one unit. You have now completed the required training. Your personal licence holder will complete a short test with you and fill in your training records. And you are now ready to start serving alcohol. If you wish to have a certificate of your training, you can apply online for a small fee. Staff certificates available at www.licensing-support.co.uk Licensed Support Scotland for staff certificates, training materials and new regulations.